So this is a 25.5, uh, much more motor, and it looks pretty nice. The construction is nice. You have two ports, two screws there just to set up the... Uh, this is the first rotor that I see that is balanced by drilling bits out. Usually uh, the rotors that I've seen, the way they balance them instead of drilling like this, they generally have some like goo, uh, goo or something put in there, some epoxy uh, to be used as a counterweight. I did not take the weight of the rotor. I probably should have done that. Maybe that's one of the reasons why, because they're balancing it by removing material rather than adding material, uh, that I got the results that I got. Uh, and once I get to KV, you will see. Uh, but this rotor is a very nice rotor. The gauss on it, as you will see, is over 1700 gauss. Now, I am going to rotate the rotor, and the reason why I rotate the rotor is so I can get the average. I, I don't really care about one side of the magnet versus the other. I just want sort of an average. So I'm rotating everything for the purpose of this, uh, and that's how I get the 1779, 1778. Uh, so just take the average. Now, timing, it comes set at 30 degrees of timing. Uh, I'm not sure why they set them up that way. Uh, other motors, for example, Trinity, uh, even Phantom, they're generally set pretty close to where you want them uh, as far as the timing. Uh, but this one I, I did not. Now, I do have a few little runs. So generally I'll go three green, uh, three yellow, and then I'll go full so that you can go ahead and pause the video and actually look at the numbers. Now this is a, uh, I did speed it up just so it wouldn't be too long, but go ahead and pause everything and then at the end, uh, well not at the end, in a bit I'll show you the table with the actual numbers. Now in the meantime before I get to the table I do have to note that the construction is great. This motor is actually beautiful. If you find motors beautiful this thing is beautiful as far as the way that is done. Uh, the craftsmanship is actually great. It's probably the best one I have seen. Uh, it's very similar to the hobby wing in the sense that the laminations go all the way to the edge. Uh, and that's something that I really do like about the, 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 the construction of the motor. And the reason why is with the hobby wing, I noticed it generally runs a little cooler. So I'm going to see how cool this one runs uh, compared to current motor that I have. Well, maybe I'll do a comparison, maybe not. So currently I have a Phantom uh, Helix 25.5. Uh, so this will replace that in my F1. Uh, but like I said, construction, probably one of the best motors I have seen uh, as far as the craftsmanship goes. And I must add a quick thanks to Speed Demon for suggesting this motor. And here's the data table. So here I went to head and uh, off camera, so this didn't show in the recording, but afterwards I started playing around with it because I want to get it as close as possible to five uh, because I want to leave it at five. So as close as possible to five. And this is what I got. So it's about uh, 49 degrees. It's very, very close to that uh, 50 degree mark. Uh, on this motor, uh, it just goes up to 50. It doesn't go up to 60, which is fine because on this particular motor 50 is where you want to be no, notice the difference just jumping let's see one degree there two there and one here so it says 49 and 50 but it's about a two degree well it's still one degree it's closer to one degree but it, it's it's an amp it jumps one amp just by going with that degree which is why it's better not to mess around with timing if you cannot uh, measure it or measure the amps because you can quickly burn out your motor. I mean, just going to 52, uh, look at this here. So it's just three degree difference. That's three amps. Uh, you'll burn up your motor if it's not cooled properly and geared properly. Uh, but this is what I'm going for. So this is what I stayed with. And here we go. So KV, KV is what I'm looking at. It's 2538. Uh, now really quick, voltage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ignore voltage. And the reason why is... Uh, yes, uh, ideally everything should be the same, so I should be comparing 8 volts to 8 volts rather than 7.7 .7 or whatever it may be, but KV is supposed to be a constant, 
Uh, if kv changes, then it's no longer a constant, it would be a variable. Now, uh, speaking to a buddy of mine, I asked him, I was like, hey, uh, there, there's a particular motor, I think it was a slot machine, or maybe it was the X-Factor. As the voltage uh, went up, the kv seemed to go down, and as k uh, voltage went down, kv went up, so it was inverse. But then with the phantom helix, uh, it was the opposite, but then one of the phantom fel helixes, or, or, sorry, I think it was the hobby wing, but then with the phantom helix, it didn't really care. Uh, so he says it could be something else that's a variable, for example, the bearings or a, a variety of other things, but not KV. KV is supposed to be a constant, which is why I'm just comparing this. So if we look at this, 2500, here's the helix. This is what I'm currently running in my F1. I mean, which one should I compare it with? This is, this is insane. Uh, let's go ahead with the slot machines. Now let's see, slot machine, I think this is the stock rotor because I was playing around with some of the rotors in the past. So if I go close to, oh, there's a five. 400 more kV. That's a lot in RPM difference once you multiply the kV difference times the voltage that one is running. Uh, it is insane. So 2500, uh, these are X factors with different rotors. I mean, the only one that comes close is this X factor with an 11.5 rotor, but this is a very weak rotor in comparison, so it tends to run at really high RPM. So this is the only one that matches it. But other than that, uh, X factor, let's see, was this, this the stock 12.3? Uh, is this the stock? I could be wrong, but let's see, 12.3 since the other one's 12.3, uh, 5. Right. If we take the difference between these, uh, the much more is much faster motor. And even if I went up, actually I don't have any other 25.5s that are worth mentioning. Uh, I do have another 25.5, but it's not worth mentioning. Uh, it would be this one, the V3. This is so outdated. Now I think they're running on the, either it's a V5, I think. Uh, I should check. Actually, it just picked up a 21.5 in, uh, yeah, V5. Uh, that I'm going to be testing at some point, at some point. Uh, but this one doesn't compare. Uh, whoa, that's really high. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the much more is definitely uh, impressive uh, just on the bench. We'll see how it does running because I'm going to swap this into my F1. So that's my next F1 motor. And uh, the other thing that I found very impressive is this. So that's the gauss reading. Now, if I compare the gauss reading versus some of the others, uh, I always forget based on the numbers. I don't know if I want to be comparing it to this one or this one. Uh, I would have to go check, but he here are the different rotors from Trinity. Uh, compared to this one, doesn't even compare. Compared to this one, it's higher gauss. We're looking at about 60 gauss more, uh, 60 to 70 more. Uh, and if we compare it to some of the others, let's see, Phantom Helix, that's, is that 100 more? That is over 100 more. That's 170, close to 170. And then over here, we have about 130. Uh, so it's a much stronger rotor. So I think I'm probably gonna get a lot more speed out of the much more compared to what I'm currently running. Uh, but uh, this is it. Uh, these are the numbers that I got. Now keep in mind that maybe I got really lucky and I got an amazing motor. Not all motors are exactly the same. So that is something that you want to keep in mind when making your decision and your purchase. Uh, but so far, uh, like I said, I, I really do like the construction. It's very similar to the Hobby Wing. Hobby Wing is a much nicer end bell though. And it's a lot easier to put back together if you were to take it apart versus this one. This one's somewhat of a pain to get the uh, rear part of the rotor into the rear bearing. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but that being said, uh, I hope this was inform informative or at least entertaining. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. My car! My, my rod! <laughs>